this is about um, a healthy menu, right? What, what should be obtained in a healthy menu? And in this study, they got calories and then the proteins, they were categorized that into different types of proteins, fat, they were categorized types of fat, and then sodium, counted sodium, fibers, they were categorized the fibers, and carbohydrate, it's in continuous scale, sugar in continuous scale, potassium in continuous, vitamins in continuous, then shelves have a variable called shelves, it's category, and weights, weights, cups, yeah, it's a category, and the rating, it's a continuous variable. And age, so a categorical variable. So when you have a data set like this, if you go to the variable view, and we are here on data, data view, and let's go through one by one. Click on variable view. So first, look at this uh, calories. It's a continuous number, right? And proteins uh, is also uh, proteins is a categorical number. So we go to variable and we look at calories. And this nominal measure has to be changed to scale. And scale means it is a continuous number in, in, uh, in SPSS, right? Second one is, here's second one is uh, a categorical variable, right? So under categorical variable, there are ordinal and nominal, but we will take it as nominal. That means we don't give any importance for any category but we give equal importance for in all categories. And fat, again, is a categorical, nominal, it is fine. And sodium, it is a continuous variable. Here it's continually changing. And we are going to change sodium into, into uh, scale. We can see that the fibers here, let's see how it looks. Fibers is a continuous variable because we don't have distinct categories, it's just that it's zero, five, and so forth. So we leave fibers, uh, so we change fibers to a continuous variable, right? Okay. And carbohydrate, it is a continuous variable. So come here and change carbo to a continuous scale. Sugars, it is continuous. We change that to sugars to scale. And potassium vitamins, they are, uh, they, are they continue to change. So we go here and change uh, potassium into scale and vitamin C to scale. Then we got shelves. Shelves continuous scale pro produce more information. Right? We, it's more precise. But sometimes some some studies try to use uh, categorical variables uh, for various reasons. If the continuous information is given, we will use continuous information. We have shelves. Shelves is categorical. Weights are uh, one, two, three, two. It's categorical weights. Cups are uh, categorical. So nominal uh, ratings is is a scale of continuous variable. So we are not going to use these ones. So I'm going to clear them. I right click and clear. Right click and clear. 
because I've done two-step analysis before, so that's why. Okay. So I, I right-click and clear. So I come here. This is what we have, right? So I want to now conduct two-step analysis. So I go analyze, scale, so I classify, and two-step cluster. And from this, we have to now include continuous variables here and categorical variables here. So let's go one by one. Name, there's nothing there, so don't worry about it. Calories, we can see here, it's a continuous variable. Proteins, we can see it's a categorical variable. Good, yeah. Fat, it's a categorical variable. Sodium, we can see it's a continuous variable. Fibers, one, two, three, four, five. It looks to me fibers is a continuous variable. Let's, I just check here. I did the right thing for fibers. Yeah, okay, good. Fibers scale. And then I come here. So I selected all my, all the factors or the variables that I needed, but I identified them as categorical variables and continuous variables. I can de decide whether I am going to specify a fixed number of clusters or I'm I'm asking you to determine automatically. So I will say, I, if I don't know, like for example, in this instance, I don't know right, how many clusters to, how many clusters it would create. So I leave the maximum so that the algorithm can create for me. So I leave it, the default is 15, I will leave it there 15 because I optimally, it will create the minimum number of clusters anyway. Then I go to options just to make sure that everything is okay. To be standardized, yeah, that's fine. And calories, sodium fibers, uh, and rate. So, so you see here that the uh, continuous variables, it is standardizing for analysis. That's what it's saying as it continues. Uh, advanced, I'll have a quick look to be standardized, yeah, again, that's it. Uh, and, okay, and I will look for output, output cluster numbers, case each, I oh, have on a sec, did I include each cancel? So will each I include it? Uh, I did not include, right? Yeah, so I will include that under categorical because it's a, it's a category, it's the created categories, right? So I include that under categories, right? It's number of cases, I think that's H. Yeah, H. Right, good. Um, and output, let's see, that's fine. So I don't need that. So everything is fine now. Create cluster membership variable, uh, working data file. Yeah, so create cluster membership variable so that it will include the cluster membership on my data view. And I say continue. Uh, and I say OK. Now, missing data, we have to treat it on, on the data file itself. If there are any missing data, we have to complete. <laughs> we have to complete that. For now, <laughs> differences, 
in nominal they're both categoric categorical uh, if there are categories it's talking about categories under the nominal each category is considered as equal i think equal importance ordinal we consider different categories with different importance so for example if you see, if you think category category one is more important than category two then we would select that ordinal thing share the output screen put this output screen and this is what i get as the output right model summary when i get the model summary output what i do is i go here to the box here and then i double click once i have got this screen on this on this new screen this is the model summary and i can click on this drop down arrow and select clusters and I, I choose clusters and then I get this cluster information. Um, so what we have got here, the clusters that it has created are not distinctly separate. There, there's, it's, it's, not, it's not completely separate. So this could happen uh, due to inherent relationships between these variables. So if there are inherent relationships between the variables, even if, you, if even if you ask the uh, the algorithm to create distinct clusters because they are inherently inherently having a relationship you can't create distinct clusters so this is a situation like this right where for example sodium and potassium when sodium increases the potassium also has to increase now, so that means they have a relationship. When there is no relationship, when the potassium increases, sodium has no relationship. For sodium doesn't have to increase. But because this is a, a kind of a, a food menu that is to be created using, the, the, using a chemical analysis, obviously there are some relationships among the variables when fat increases something else has to increase by a certain, certain amount so because there's some inherent relationship it can't create completely distinct clusters so this is a situation like that right because we we provided the algorithm to do the best but still it can't because there are inherent relationships it has created the clusters right, for us right, for analysis just like in uh, the uh, non-hierarchical it creates clusters for us